So once we flip this over, we're gonna know if we have a Philadelphia or a Denver mint mark. If we get the 1955 Philadelphia, that will be a key date coin. Let's see if we can get lucky here. Three, two, one. No freaking way. Hello everybody and welcome back to CoinQuest. CoinQuest of course is the series where I take $100 boxes of nickels, look through the rolls in the boxes, looking for interesting and valuable coins that I can use to fill in these collection books. So with this whole virus thing going on, I've been a little bit worried about getting these boxes of coins from the bank. Luckily, before all this started, I was able to stockpile quite a few boxes of coins, so I have a whole bunch of boxes of nickels and pennies, and today we're gonna jump into one of those boxes of nickels. So here is a top-down view of this box of nickels. Let's go ahead and and open it up and take a look at what's inside. As you can see, I've written down a couple of notes. We have a 1940 Ender and then two reverse Denver Enders plus a Canadian Ender. So these four rolls right here contain the Enders. Let's pull them out and take a closer look. All right, so here they are, the four Enders on the box. Let's take a look at this 1940 Ender first. So right here, this is one of the oldest Jefferson nickels that you could possibly find in circulation. And uh, as you can see there, the date on that is 1940. It also looks like it has a little bit of tape on it. Now moving on to the reverse enders. So we have two of them right here. One of them has a Denver mint mark. The other one does not have any mint mark, which means it was made in Philadelphia. And I'll go ahead and point out that Denver mint mark with an arrow on the screen now. You can see it just barely poking out behind the wrapper there. I'm gonna date these coins as pre-1964, hopefully getting into that 50s or 40s range and uh, maybe even get a rare coin out of one of those. And last but not least, we have a Canadian Ender, which is something that you typically don't see in the United States uh, unless you're from the northern states like I am. I'm from Michigan, so these do show up quite a bit. We do already have this one in the collection, but like I said, it's pretty cool to see. So with all that being said, we're going to go ahead and jump right into the hunt, starting off with these Enders live. So I'm going to grab that 1940 and uh, we'll start with that one and uh, see what's going on with this whole tape situation on that coin. All right, let's uh, just jump right into it here. My uh, nails are a little bit short, so it's kind of difficult to get into these uh, rolls when you have short nails. But uh, anyway, that ender is going to be on this side right here. Let's see if we can get this uh, part cleanly without uh, spilling any coins there. Okay, so there we go. We got the ender out, and uh, there's definitely some tape on it, as you can see on that bottom side. Now, I believe we are looking for the San Francisco. I do already have all of these in my collection, but uh, let's see if we can get a San, a San Francisco mint mark on the reverse side here in three, two, one. Oh, look at that, guys. We actually did get the San Francisco mint mark right there on the right-hand side of the Monticello, so definitely a good way to be starting off this box. All right, so let's just briefly go through the rest of the coins in the roll to see if we're gonna get anything else of value or anything that's interesting or old. Uh, as I always say, I'm looking for uh, pre-1960, so 1959 and before is uh, basically what I pull out here. And uh, of course, there's a bunch of other things, everything that you see on the placemat here, uh, which I am using to look through these coins, is pretty much stuff that you're gonna wanna look for but uh, it doesn't look like we're gonna get anything else in that roll, so I'm just gonna move these coins to the side and get onto the next one. So this next one here, this is the reverse ender. I don't think this is the Denver though. Actually, let's pull that over to the side. It's just a little bit in the way. Yep, actually this one is the Denver reverse. So uh, like I said, that dates this coin at least as old as 1964. Hopefully we can get something pre-60s here so that we can keep it. All right, so it's gonna be on that right side. Let's pull out this uh, reverse ender here. Take a look at the reverse. We see the Denver Mint and we'll flip it over to see if we can get anything, but unfortunately it's just a 1964. So I guess that one fooled us. Uh, those 64s do tend to fool you. They look like an older coin, but they always come out like that. All right, so let's see if we can get anything else old here. This one looks particularly old uh, to me. Oh, and also I forgot to mention I am looking for the 2009s as well. That's something that you uh, typically don't see come out very often uh, because they are a little bit lower mintage. All right, so here we got a 1941, just one year, old, uh, one year newer that is than the 1940 that we found earlier. Let's flip this over once again, looking for that San Francisco mint mark in this year. That would make this much better than the Philadelphia or Denver. So let's see if we can get it. Three, two, one. Yes, guys, look at that. Two San Francisco's in a row. I can already tell this is gonna be a good box. This is, this is I think I'm gonna call this the West Coast box because we're already getting those San Francisco mint marks. We're two for two on them. That is really, really cool. I don't think we need that one in the collection though, but I will have to check uh, on the back of the placemat because I think that may actually be 
a low mintage coin. But uh, I think that's it for that one. So let's move on to the next ender now. Once again, another reverse ender. Uh, this one doesn't have any mint marks, so it doesn't have a Denver or a San Francisco, which means it was minted in Philadelphia. So once again, gonna be on that right hand side. Let's just pull it out here and uh, see if we can get anything once we flip it over to the obverse. So let's look for something. Oh, 1969, that's even worse than a 64, unfortunately, but uh, Hey, you know, you win some and you lose some. So I guess technically so far this box only actually had one ender that ended up being pre-60s uh, or a, of any, you know, interest uh, to us as coin collectors. So just looking through this one now, see if we can get anything out of it. Make sure to let me know down in the comments below if you think I missed something, particularly those 2009s. They do slip by sometimes. And uh, that's not something that I want to happen. I want to make sure I'm getting every single coin that I possibly can uh, that's going to be worth some sort of value. Now, one thing I do want to point out, guys, in the CoinQuest series, I actually have not found the 2019s yet. So I think this is actually going to be a coin right here, the 2019 Denver. Fairly new coin, I would say, that's uh, going to be going into the collection today. So I'm going to put that one to the side. Definitely not something that's difficult to find, but uh, I don't have it in the collection yet. So I will be putting that one to the side. All right, last but not least, we have our Canadian Ender. We already know it's gonna be a 1982. So let's go ahead and unwrap it and pull it out and just take a look at that Canadian coin. Just in case you guys are unfamiliar with Canadian coins, I find them quite a bit. Like I said, I'm very close to the Canadian border. So 1982, fairly common date for the Canadians. They flip this way, so you gotta remember that when you're flipping these over to take a look at uh, the other side of the coin. And you can see right there, Queen Elizabeth on that side. So let's get into the rest of this roll. Let's see if that Canadian brought us any luck and see if we can get another San Francisco coin. That would be pretty cool. Ooh, guys, especially on this one, look at this. It looks like we are gonna be getting some luck out of this roll right here. I just got a 1952. Now something to remember in the Jefferson Nichols, those early 50s, I'm talking 50, 51, and 52 are all pretty low mintage, especially if you can get that San Francisco. So let's see if we can go three for three on San Francisco mints here and get the 1952S. Three, two, one. Oh, come on. 1952 Philadelphia it is. I think that's probably the most common, but I don't know right off the top of my head. Still a great coin to be putting to the side. And uh, let's move on here and see what else we can get. So we just got a 1960 Denver right there. That does not make it our cutoff uh, to keep, so I will be putting that one back. But let's see if we can get any more out of the last few coins in this roll. That's a 76D. It looks really nice but I don't think I'll be keeping it. And it looks like that's about it. So first four rolls, pretty good job there. I'm gonna flip over to the back of this placemat, see if we got something really good on that 41S and I will get back to you guys in just a sec. All right guys, so just flipped over to the back of the placemat to check on the 1941S. Unfortunately, I don't see it in either the key date or low mintage range. I believe I was confusing it for that 1946S, which actually does make it into that low mintage range. But uh, just taking a look at the collection here real quick, just because it's been a while since we've looked at it. You can see that we don't have very many coins left that we actually need. Surprisingly, we were able to get the 38S and 39S. So all we have left is the 38D and 39D for this uh, section here. Mostly we're just missing the war nickels, which were in between 1942 and 1945. You can see we're missing quite a few there. And then if you flip over to the next page, we just have a few uh, remaining. Still haven't found a single 1950 of either of uh, the mintages here. So you can see that we have three in a row missing right there, but everything else is pretty much filled in. Uh, I do wanna bring your attention to this back page though. You can see right here, uh, the latest that we have is the 2018. So I'll try to get that in the light so you can see. These are the 2018s, we still need the 2019s. So that uh, 2019 that I found earlier, I think we got the Denver. Uh, we do have it right there and it's going to be going in right there. So we st are still on the lookout for the 2019 Philadelphia. I'm sure we'll find it in this box, but with that being said, I'm gonna get into the next roll and see what else we can find. So a couple rolls later now, and we have quite the find here. First off, I wanna show you one of the first coins that came out of this roll was the 2019 Philadelphia. Like I said, uh, that one was definitely gonna show up. These coins have been out for a while now. So I'll be putting that one into the collection. But uh, really what we turn the camera on for here is this coin right here, which looks like it's going to be a 19 
1942. So for the 1942, when we flip this over, if there's a mint mark on the top of the Monticello, that would mean that it's a silver coin. If there's no mint mark or a mint mark on the right hand side of the Monticello, that would mean that it is not a silver coin. So let's flip this over and see what we have in three, two, one. All right, so as you can see, there is no mint mark on this coin, meaning that it is just a regular 1942 Philadelphia. And it looks like we already have that one in the book. So uh, I will not be putting this one into the book today. I will be getting off that nasty stuff so that you guys can actually see the date. Uh, so I'm gonna do that now and I'll get back to you in just a sec. So as you guys can see, there's a really good reason to be using at least one glove on the hand that you're using to handle these coins because there is some really nasty stuff on coins. Coins are dirty. Money Money is dirty in general, a lot of people touching it, especially this one which has been in circulation for almost 80 years. It is indeed the 1942 and uh, it is the non-silver variety. So that's a cool coin to find, I'll put that one to the side. I don't think there's anything else super notable in this particular role. So we're just gonna get on the next one and uh, I will turn the camera back on when I find something good. So we're five or six rolls later now. I had a few finds in between, but we just got something that I definitely had to turn the camera on for. We found one of these earlier in the box and once again, here we have a 1952. Now I checked the mintages, the 1952 plane, which we found earlier, it comes in at about 64 million minted. If you can get the Denver, that comes in at 30 million minted, getting close Closer to that low mintage range but if you can get the 1952 San Francisco that comes in at 20 million minted so uh, that would be in that low mintage range so once again we're looking for any mint mark would be great uh, but the San Francisco mint mark would be the best so let's see if we can get it on this one here in three two one and once again, we have a Philadelphia mint mark. Well, no mint mark really, which means it was made in Philadelphia. Still a cool coin, a pretty nice looking coin as well. So I'll put that one to the side. One thing I did want to point out that we did find, this is a coin that we actually do not have yet. It's a Canadian coin, 1996. So I pulled out my Canadian collection album and as you can see, we have two spots for 1996. Surprisingly, there's a far six and near six variety. Now, I don't actually know all that much about Canadian coins, but I did just make a recent purchase that might be able to help me with this. So this right here is a book, it's called Coins of Canada and it's the 2020 edition. As you can see, it's super thick, so it's very comprehensive, has a lot of information in it. As you guys probably know from my recent videos, I have the 2006 version of this book and I figured it's about time to upgrade. So uh, we're gonna take a look at this for the first time to see what it's got in it and hopefully it can help us with this 1990. All right, so flipping to the correct page in the book, you can see here we have the 1996 Near and Far Six listed. Unfortunately, there are no pictures in the book, so I had to go to the internet for this one. And uh, here is what we see. Basically, the Near Six, we're looking at how close is that six to the D in Canada. So you can see this is a Near Six right here. It's super close to that D. And then this is a Far Six, a very, very subtle difference as you can see but uh, definitely one that is distinguishable. So let's take a look at this coin and see if we can figure out whether we have a near six or a far six. Now I have to say guys, this is probably something that's gonna take a magnifying glass to figure out. And uh, all of you Canadian coin experts out there, take a look at this and let me know what you guys think. Is this a near six or a far six? I'm gonna go with far six at the moment. I'm gonna put it in that hole, but uh, if somebody comments otherwise, uh, somebody a little bit more knowledgeable than me on Canadian coins, I will definitely take your advice into consideration. So we're about seven or eight rolls later now, and we have just found ourselves in a very strange predicament. As you can see right here, we have a 1955 Jefferson nickel. And the thing to note about the 1955, there was no San Francisco this year. There was only Denver and Philadelphia. So once we flip this over, we're gonna know if we have a Philadelphia or a Denver mint mark. The thing is, the Denver is way easier to find than the Philadelphia. So we're looking for the Philadelphia here. If we get the 1955 Philadelphia, that will be a key date coin, which I've only found one of in my entire coin roll hunting Nichols career. So that would be super crazy if we get it here. I'm really hoping for the Philadelphia. I flipped probably 20 of these and never found it uh, except for one time. So let's see if we get lucky here and make that two. Three, two, one. 
Ah, unfortunately, it's just gonna be a Denver. Once again, you can see the little Denver mint mark there to the right of the Monticello. So we'll put that one to the side and get into the rest of these rolls. All right, guys, so surprisingly, just a couple rolls later and we are in the exact same situation. We have another 1955 right here. I just checked the mintage on these to make sure the 55 Philadelphia comes in at 8.2 million, whereas the 55 Denver comes in at 74 million. So it's like 10 times more likely that you get a 55 Denver over the Philadelphia. Let's see if we can get lucky here. Three, two, one. No freaking way. Oh, guys, we got it. Look at that. No mint mark right there. That's the second one I've ever gotten in my entire career of cornrow hunting nickels unbelievable i really didn't think we were going to get it that time because it just never comes up we missed it the first time we got it the second time 1955 plane 8.2 million minted baby key date right there that is so so cool i'm going to flip this over in just a sec so you guys can see this on the placemat it is a key date below 10 million minted as i said 8.2 million of these were made and they are very very difficult to find that is so cool. Unless that mint mark's hiding under there, under that grime. No, I don't think it is. 1955 Philadelphia right there. All right, let's see if that's gonna bring us any more luck on this roll. Just for the heck of it, let's go through this and uh, see what else we can get on the roll. It looks like we are gonna get something else, at least 1959 right there. Something that I do keep, 59 Denver. And uh, let's see if we're gonna get three nice coins on this roll. I'm not gonna really check these too diff too hard. Uh, I don't really see anything old, so I'm just gonna dump these into the box here. And we'll flip it over to the back side right here. Let's take a look at that key date range right there, 1955, literally one of the only Philadelphia coins to make it into either the key date or low mintage ranges in the Jefferson nickels. And something interesting I wanna show you, if you take a look at the low mintage Buffalo nickels, you literally see zero of them from the Philadelphia mint. So the Philadelphia mint didn't produce very many rare coins, but the 55 is definitely one of them. And I think it may be uh, the rarest that came out of there, except for maybe the 1950. That is so cool, guys. 1955 plane. I'll just show you once more. It's right there, and it's real, and it's in my hands. That is so, so cool. So after all of that hype, here is the part where I say that we actually already have the 1955 in the collection. This is literally the only other one that I found. It actually came out in the CoinQuest series, so you can see that it is already in the book. Nonetheless, that is one of the most difficult coins to find in the Jefferson Nickel series, and I couldn't be happier with it. So apparently there's some disagreement over the mintage figure of the 1955 Philadelphia. I was getting my initial information from the Dansko book, which said 8.2 million, but if you look at the red book, you actually see 1955 here at 7.8 million which is even better and uh, I also just realized that this is literally the rarest thing to come out of Philadelphia uh, or the rarest nickel to come out of Philadelphia since the V nickels which is pretty crazy to think about but uh, anyways guys we did get into the next few rolls I think we're about three later and I just got a 1949 obverse side up and you saw we just looked at the book a second ago we do still need the 1949 San Francisco I believe if we take a look over here it looks like that is going to be a key date coin so if we can get it right here that's two key date coins in a row and this one will be going into the collection i would basically do a backflip so let's see if we can get it here three two one ah no definitely not going to be san francisco this time this is a very rough coin by the way uh, it looks like we just have Philadelphia, uh, as you see, no mint mark on this coin. So anyway, better luck next time. I'm going to get into the rest of this roll, see if we can get anything else out, and I will turn the camera back on when I find something good. All right, guys, so I just opened the very next roll, and this is something that you typically don't see in a nickel roll. As you can see right there, there's one coin that really stands out to me, and the reason for that is because it's so thin. And I gotta say, guys, my heart is kinda going fast right now because I think that this could possibly be a V-nickel, just like we were just talking about. I can't say for sure, and this may just be a bust, but look at how thin that coin is. Oh my gosh. Let's pull this out and see what we're going to get here in three, two, Unfortunately, <laughs> let's, not, let's not even go that far with it. God, that, that really looked like it was gonna be something. It looks like it's just gonna be a, uh, a dryer coin, which is basically a coin that has been tumbling around in the dryer for a very long time, which has caused it to wear out and look thin. 
I thought we were gonna have a V-nickel there for sure, but it's just a 1977 Denver. My God, that was that was, that was pretty exciting. Uh, I really wish it would have been a V-nickel, but uh, you know, you don't always get V-nickels. As a matter of fact, you hardly ever do. But just to expand on something I was saying earlier, I was just checking the book. Like I said, rarest nickel to come out of Philadelphia since the V-nickel days. And I looked a little bit further into this, and as you can see here, the V-nickel mintages, we're looking for something lower than uh, 7.8. And you can see that it doesn't get lower than that until you go all the way back to 1894. So this coin that we found, the 1955 plane, let's see if I can locate it once again. This 1955 plane right here is literally the rarest nickel to come out of Philadelphia since 1894. How crazy is that? And I apologize that my hands are shaking. I really thought we had a V nickel there for a second. So uh, my, my heart's kind of going fast, hands are shaking and all that good stuff. But let's just get into the rest of these rolls. Hopefully we can pull something old out like that. Maybe a buffalo would be cool as well. We'll see what we find when we get into the next one. All right, so we're a little past the halfway point in the box now, which I think is a good point to tell you a little bit more about these coin roll hunting nickels placemats, which I've been using throughout this this video. As you can see, this is the mat that I use to coin roll hunt nickels. It has some nice visuals across the front of it to help you identify the coins in the rolls and everything that you could possibly find. And then if you flip over to the back side, you see that we have this Quinn's Coins official nickel coin roll hunting competition score sheet, which we use in our competition videos. And then on top of that, we have our key date low mintage and low mintage buffalo ranges, which I've showed extensively throughout this video. You already know what those are for. They're for helping you identify if you have a rare coin or not. And then probably the most useful part about these coin roll hunting placemats is that you can coin roll hunt on them and then use them to pick up the coins that you're rejecting and dump them into your dump box once you're done. So if you want to pick up one of these nickel placemats or a penny placemat for yourself to aid you in your coin roll hunting, you can head on over to my website at quincecoins.com and I'll put a link down in the description below. With that being said, let's continue on with the hunt. All right guys, so we're about five rolls later now. A couple rolls ago, I found this coin right here, which ended up being a 1963, kind of nicely toned over there on the right side. And there's sort of a line going uh, from the bottom of the three over to uh, Jefferson's ponytail there. I don't really know what that is, so if you guys uh, think you have any idea from looking at it on camera, please do let me know. The reason I pulled this aside is because the shine on it gives it an almost proof-like look. And uh, if you do know about these early 60s coins, uh, the in the 60s, I think bef up until 1964, I believe, uh, proof coins were actually made in Philadelphia. And as you can see, this is a Philadelphia minted coin right here. There's no mint mark on uh, the reverse side there to the right of the Monticello. So uh, this could possibly be a proof coin right here. So I'm definitely going to uh, put it to the side and consider it for that. Uh, the reason I did turn on the camera here though is that at the end of this roll right here, we got another Canadian coin, 1994 on this one. And this is just crazy guys. Look at how full this uh, page of the Canadian book is. But we have one hole right there. And as you saw earlier, we had a 1996 missing as well. We're just like pinpointing these holes in the collection and uh, finding all of the Canadians to put them in, which is great. So 1994, this one's actually not too rare, 99 million. Uh, made right there, but it will fill that hole right there. It's going to complete that row uh, as far as we know. I don't really know if we actually have a far six or not because not super great at uh, diagnosing these Canadian coins. But as you can see though, we only have two more coins left on this page regardless of the 1996 being a far or near six. So that's pretty cool. We uh, are definitely filling up this Canadian collection now. It's one of the few collections that actually has holes remaining. Um, and then of course we have the Buffalo Nickel collection that we're trying to fill out, which if you take a look at that, you can see it's pretty bare. We have uh, one coin right there. I think we have like one coin on the next page. Oh no, we actually have two on this page. As you can see at 20, 1920 and 23. Nothing else there, and then I think there's one more page here which we can take a look at. Almost completely bare except for the 1937, so definitely a lot of work to do there. I think we got about 10 more rolls to go. Hopefully we can get a coin that actually goes into that collection before the end of the box. All right guys, second to last roll here, and we have a few interesting finds. We'll start off with a 2009 Philadelphia, which was a nice sight to see. Uh, like I said in the beginning of the video, these are low mintage comparatively to the coins around them. And I'll show you that right here. If we take a look at the red book uh, around the 2009 era, you can see that most of these mintages are in the hundreds of millions, but the 2009 Philly and Denver 
both fall below 50 million, which is uh, pretty significant according you know, to looking at all of these other mintages. And uh, apparently that was due to the recession. Now I have a feeling that 2020 coins may be in a similar situation. So be looking out for those 2020 coins. They may end up uh, being rare just like these 2009s. So I'm gonna put that one to the side. That's definitely a good find. And then we actually got two Canadian coins out of this one, none of which are gonna be going into the collection. We got a 1986 and a 1987, so I'll put those to the side as well. Let's just get into this last roll. I figure we'll do it live because it is the last one, and uh, maybe the camera will bring us some luck. I still haven't seen a buffalo or a v-nickel out of uh, this box yet, and uh, come to think of it, I haven't seen a silver war nickel yet either, but uh, I haven't really seen one of those in quite a while, so I guess that is to be expected. But let's go ahead and go through this last roll, see if we can get anything good out of it. Like I said, it has been a pretty slow end to the box, so. I'm not really expecting a whole lot, but you know, just in case. So anyway, I'm not really seeing uh, anything that looks super old. I don't see any uh, war nickels or buffalo nickels. This one's pretty dark, which is kind of interesting. Uh, getting down to the end of it here, I don't see anything other than this uh, reverse Denver Ender right here. Let's flip this over and see if we can get something old on the last one. And of course, it's going to be a 1964. So with that being said, I'm gonna put these coins in order and then we're gonna head right into the wrap up. All right guys, welcome to the wrap up on this CoinQuest box. We're gonna start up here with the Jeffersons from the 1950s, all common, worth two points a piece. We got a couple 1952s there, a 53, 54, this is a 55 Denver, which is the uh, non-rare variety. We'll get to the other one in just a second here. Uh, we got a 58 and a whole bunch of 59s. So two points a piece, we got 10 coins right there, that's 20 points. Now coming down to the Jefferson Nichols from the 1940s. So we have a 1940, that was the ender on the box. We got a couple 1941s, a 1942 non-silver variety, and then we jump up to 1948 and 1949. So uh, it looks like we have six of those at four points a piece is gonna be 24 more points. Uh, one thing I didn't show you, we actually did get one Jefferson nickel from the 30s. It was a 1939 plane, and that one is going to be worth five points for us. Now coming down here to our key date Jeffersons. We didn't get any low mintage, but we did get a key date Jefferson. Definitely the coin on the box right here, the 1955 plane. And I'm gonna use the glove hand to flip that over so you can see that it is indeed a Philadelphia. There is no mint mark on that coin. Very, very cool to find. Now coming down here to the proof coins. So I'm gonna go ahead and chalk this one up as a proof. It is a 1963, but uh, if you look at it, it definitely has some good luster to it. I'm not 100% certain, but just looking at that somewhat mirror-like finish, I think that this is a proof that has been in circulation for a long time. But definitely let me know down in the comments below uh, what your thoughts are on this one. But anyways, if it is a proof, it is going to be worth 10 points. So that's 10 more points right there. Now coming down here to 2009, those are worth five points a piece because of their rarity, and we got one of those. And uh, so I think that's pretty much all of the coins that we got. Uh, we have a couple that went into the collection here, the 2019 Denver and 2019 Philadelphia. You can see those are in the collection here and here, which is gonna expand on that last page in the nickel collection a little bit. And then we also got the 1996P and 1994 Canadian nickels. As you can see right here, we got the 1996 here and the 94 right there. And then you can see down here, we have a few more Canadian coins and a couple of Greece errors. All in all, it comes out to 84 points on the box. And as I always say, 100 points and over is an exceptional box. This isn't quite there, but it was definitely a good box, especially with that 1955 plane, which is gonna be going into its own two by two in just a second here, along with this 1963 potential proof. So guys, once again, if you're interested in picking up one of these coin roll hunting nickels placemats to aid you in your own nickel roll hunting, make sure to head on over to my website at quinzcoins.com and I'll put links down in the description below. But anyways, guys, that's gonna pretty much do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to go down below and leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new because we post new videos like this every single week, always bringing you along with the hunts and having a good time. And make sure to check out those CoinQuest Nichols playlists that are popping up at the end of this video if you haven't already. And with that being said, I'm Quinn and this is Quinn's Coins signing out and I will see you in the next one.